Hello everybody, it's Bocho's brother back with another one for you based on the two books by Critical Role. We're going to be looking at Taldorai first and then Exandria and Wildmount. Um, I love the genre of Critical Role. I think uh, these guys are the top of the game, the top banana when it comes to Dungeons and Dragons. Nobody plays Dungeons and Dragons like Matthew Mercer and the crew. They had a season one, which this book is based on. If you want to watch that season, we'll put the link below. It is a good idea to start around episode 40 or 50, as they were just starting out back in 2015, and things don't really get cooking until around those episodes. But it's absolutely terrific. Um, and their adventures take place in the first campaign far to the west in this continent called Taldorai. And this book is about that continent. Uh, the book was also made by Matthew Mercer with uh, some help from James Hayek and has a unique art style. Taldorai campaign setting. You open the book, you get uh, a bit of a map here. The quality of the book is, is quite good as well. Here is Matthew Mercer himself. Uh, with a little bit of an intro and then you get into the book. It uh, brings you in by introducing you to the world of Critical Role, the history of the land, the great calamity, what's happened to the gods, where are we at, what is happening. And everything in this book is directly tied in with what has happened to the characters in the story on YouTube. So playing in this world you're going to get to really connect with some of these famous characters um, found in the series. They fought uh, this conclave of dragons. Then you get a good section on all the gods, uh, which are very much involved throughout the series. And then to describe all the races, uh, how they live in, in this world, which could be a bit different from how it would be in um, the standard Dungeons and Dragons uh, campaign. They have Goliaths, for example, the half giants, uh, who are kind of unique in this world. Half elves, the orcs, all of those guys are there. Tiflings. Once you get through that section, you are able to see the different um, alliances, the different groups inhabit this continent and this world and you can either fight against them or join them, uh, make alliance with them, and then get help in your adventures. That's all described in this section here. So after the faction section, you get a good 60 pages of the Gazetteer of the lands, all the different places Vox Machina goes to visit in the series with much more depth. So it's like getting to go on a traveler's guide to all of these places you saw in your imagination during the season and visit there with your own characters. And you can even interact with the likes of Vex and Vax, the Elven twins, or perhaps Keyleth the Druid, or Percy and Pike, and the other characters, some of my favorites, Grog, the half-giant barbarian, and Scandalin. And after the Gazetteer, you get this beautiful artwork of the characters from the series. Here we see little Scanlan, the bard, and we see Percy with his pistol and muskets. We see Vax and Vex. We see Keyleth. Where's Grog? Big Grog there up at the top. And we have little Pike, the cleric, who's done such impressive things throughout the series there along with Vex's bear. Look at that guy. He's always popping in and out of this necklace. What's his name? Put it there in the comments below, if you remember. After this section, now if you're not even gonna use this book to run your campaign, you still get a lot of good quality material here with the new player class options. You have the um, blood domain here for clerics. They have the Path of the Juggernaut for Barbarians, and they have the Rune Child Sorcerer. 
So that just expands your character options in a wonderful way. You have the Monk's Way of the Cobalt Soul, and then you have a class membership here. Taldore Backgrounds. So this can bring you a little bit closer into the world, giving you a background unique to the world of Taldorai. You get new feats. I always love books where I can pick out new feats because it brings something unique to my game. Uh, just to read a few of these, you got Cruel, Dual Focused. You have uh, Flash Recall on Spells, The Gambler, Mending, Affinity. You have Mystic con uh, Conflux. You have Rapid Drinker. That could be fun for a wild dwarven drinking feller. You have Spell Driver, Throw Arms Master, Throne Arms Master there. That's always fun because the base game doesn't give you a lot of options on throwing weapons. So Throne Arms Master could be great. And after that, this, this is the crowning jewel of the book. Look at the image here. It is the crowning jewel because these are the vestiges of divergence. These are high tier, high level equipment um, that is found at the end of the series. So no spoilers if you haven't seen this before. Uh, now's the time to turn off and come back at the end of the video. The Armor of Valiant Soul. The Cobble's Ruin. And here we have Fenthris. That bow, ooh, that bow was awesome when, when Vex got that bow. Or Vaxalia, sorry. Vaxalia was the female Vex. We always get them mixed up. They're uh, elven twins. Well, you just get all of these beautiful items. I'm not going to read them all because there are quite a few. And they are something to not hand out lightly as a dungeon master. Because they're incredibly powerful and incredibly awesome. Whisper, the dagger that you can throw chunks into somebody and you teleport to them. Very cool. So that, for me, is the crowning jewel of this book. I really love the way they do death in Critical Role. Uh, characters do die, and he doesn't just say, okay, you can do a resurrection, and now they can come back. They actually have to do an entire role-playing of the situation, the scenario, and due to the role-playing and the roles, they may come back, or they may come back damaged, or not at all. So this is another great piece in this book. More beautiful artwork. And at the very end, the monstrous races. Um, here you also have the monster stat blocks. We'll just kind of briefly go through there. Great artwork. I really love this book. And it's uh, quite reasonably priced, I think at 30 to 40 euros. They just sent it to me from uh, a ways down in Sweden, mid-Sweden. So this book is out there. The Kickstarter is obviously over, but you can still get a hold of this. Taldorai, my friends. Now let's go to the next one. Okay, as you know, uh, in Campaign 1, they do visit Wildmount, but Campaign 2 takes place primarily in Wildmount, which is to the east of Taldorai. Kind of connects up. You can see it here behind me. Here's Taldurai, and you take a boat or travel over there, and you come to Wild Mount. And this book uh, looks different from the first one because the first one was made by Matt Mercer and was a Kickstarter. This book was made in collaboration with the folks at uh, Dungeons and Dragons. So. Uh, you'll see the art looks different. The art in the book uh, was provided by many of the fans of the series. So you get all kinds of different art in this book. The book feels thicker. Uh, the quality of the book is optimal. And the font layout, everything is beautiful. It's very similar to the other book in that you get an introduction to what is Exandria, the world where these continents are, and more specifically, what is Wildmount? What are the regions? What is the history? So here we're getting a history and a background of Wildmount. I believe everything is taking place after the adventures of Vox Machina. And in this campaign, the heroes are uh, the Mighty Nine. As you see, they give you that introduction again to the world, what happened, how there was the great calamity between the gods, and the gods have been banished 
and are behind a great gate, so they're not easily accessible, leaving all the races uh, to kind of fend for themselves and vie for themselves. All the factions you will recognize from the series, uh, monk factions uh, of assassinations, criminal syndicates, um, righteous uh, groups of heroes, and um, here you're getting that description of all the races. And uh, Exandria is a world filled with many races. It's not um, just narrowed down to that elf, dwarf, human, as in some other campaigns. It is a wide variety, and you're going to get some races here that are not found in the other books. Now here we have the Wildmount Gazetteer, which will be many pages. As with the Tal Dorai book, you get a good description, giving you all the details about any location your characters might go to visit in Wildmount and Exandria. You even get uh, city maps, different NPCs that you will recognize from the series are outlined in this section. So after the Gazetteer, um, which is about a hundred pages. So now with Taldorai, you've got about a hundred pages there, a hundred pages for Wildmount. You know this world, you live there now. And now for the character options, this is cool. We get some new races of elves. You get the Arakoa option as a player class. A lot of description there. And they give you quite a lot of details as well as benefits that you would get. The Isamar, who are kind of a, you know, the angelic, godlike people. And the Dragonborn. There are two types of Dragonborn in the world of Exandria. Some with tails, some without tails. Um, they were enslaved, the ones without tails, I believe. Um, and you get their background. You can play them as a uh, player race. Furbolgs. And furbolgs, that's our, our, our happy, go lucky, uh, tea drinking character Caleb in the series. It's a furbolg, I believe. Um, the turtle, look at this guy, the turtle. He had such a cool accent in the series. It was kind of a uh, deep south Cajun, it was the Cajun turtle on the boat. And then the hollow one. Right? You have the ravens, the raven queen. The hollow one is someone who's come back from the dead and is something like the dead ranger in Game of Thrones with the hollow one. I, I definitely want to try out that one as well. Three new classes to choose from as well. The Echo Knight, who can kind of separate himself into two bodies. And so combining hollow one with Echo Knight would make an awesome fighter who you're kind of mirror imaging yourself in combat. So the book also gives you uh, deeper depth on your character. You can have this overarching story that the DM can use. So you can have the heroic uh, chronicle that the DM knows about. And so as you're advancing, there are some goals, some outposts to uh, upgrade your character with a heroic chronicle as well as extra background, extra depth in the background of your character to just give you as a role player, as an actor, because these people who do critical role are quite good voice actors and improv actors. So all the background you can get on your character before you play or as you're playing is gonna help you to be more of a um, thespian style Dungeons and Dragons player. So that's a great help there. Um, once you've gotten through all that, you know the land, you've got a character, you've got the extra new races. Um, and now, as a DM, you're able to come to this section. It provides you with four different adventures in four different uh, locations around Wildmount. One is a snowy area, so no spoilers. Don't look at this if you're a player. Uh, there's a snowy area, there's a more of a sea coastal adventure, and then there are adventures. Uh, look at this monster! I mean, that's not even like, oh, he's in the inn, he's going to come out and get you. That's something you would find 
that would just put terror in your heart. That looks like it's in some spooky wood somewhere. So you're getting also extra bestiary, which I always love in these expansion books. So many monsters to choose from, monsters seen in the series, monsters that are unique. Remember when they fought the giants? They have the frost giant zombies here. Everything you've seen in the series, uh, you find here in the back of the Wild Mount Bestiary. And that's where the book uh, concludes. So my final conclusion is enjoy Critical Role. Listen to it while you're doing uh, things around the house if you need to, and uh, or if you're working. If you're able to, it's very relaxing to watch on TV if you just want to kick back and relax. And after watching the series, go ahead and pick up both these books and go into Fantasyland and create your own uh, Exandri adventures in Taldorai and in Wildmount. Thanks again for watching my channel. If you have any questions or ideas or things that you've been inspired to do with the books you see here, feel free to put them in the comments below and I will catch you in the next one. Bye for now.